Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. All right, if you don't like the sermon, you've got to talk to my buddy here about that, okay? <laughs> Are there any original Star Trek fans here this morning? Yeah. I confess to being a Trekkie. I love to watch as Captain Kirk boldly took the Enterprise to, to places where no one had gone before usually getting into trouble, and only to be rescued by Spock's logical mind and, at, and by Scotty, who at the last second always got the warp drive to work. The last Star Trek movie, with the original cast, carried a unique message for us today. A space probe was approaching Earth, and it was sending out sounds, strange sounds, and listening for a reply. And when there was no reply, the probe obliterated everything that didn't respond. No one could figure out what the sound was until, of course, Spock determined that the sound was the song of a humpback whale, a species that in Star Trek time had become extinct. And because it was extinct, the Earth couldn't respond and was doomed. So the only solution was to go back in time, rescue two whales so that they could talk to the space probe and save the Earth. Well, that movie may seem a little far-fetched, but it raises questions for us today as we celebrate the animals in our life and this season of creation. Do we really understand the underlying relationship of humankind and all the animals and plants of creation and our ultimate existence. How will our relationship with the animals and all creation determine the future of our life on vineyard planet Earth? Perhaps we get a little glimpse of that in our Jonah reading today. Can you imagine the sight it must have been? The king and all the people in sackcloth, burlap, and sitting in ashes, these were traditional Jewish repentance signs. And with them, there are all the animals, also in sackcloth and sitting in ashes. Now, on the surface, that can seem like a funny scene. All the animals wearing burlap and rolling around in ashes with the people. Funny until we ask ourselves a question. If the animals hadn't participated hadn't participated in the repentance of Nineveh, would God have spared the city? What if there were no animals, or the animals had been left out? Would people still have survived? That's a question we have to ask ourselves today, as we live in the vineyard that is planet Earth, and think about our relationship with the animals and all creation. Just how is our survival on vineyard planet Earth intertwined with the survival of the animals, the animals that we just blessed, and the plants and animals of all creation? Think about the gospel parable. In the gospel parable, Jesus tells us about wicked tenants, people who dishonor the landowner, break the agreement, take things into their own hands, kill the servants, the messengers, and kill the son of the landowner. Let's look at that gospel vineyard next to our vineyard planet Earth today. And let's begin by seeing who you identify with. Yes, it is congregation participation in the Sermon Sunday. So, if you identify with the wicked tenants, raise your hand. And don't worry, we'll, un we'll erase the video. <laughs> oh, nobody identifies with the wicked uh, tenants. Good. How many of you identify with the servants sent by the landowner to try and get the wicked tenants to honor the agreement? Okay, got some. How many identify with the chief priests and the Pharisees? Listening to Jesus and condemning the tenants while really pointing at themselves. No Pharisees here today. 
How many of you identify with the sun? Giving your life, trying, trying to make things right. Okay, good. Are there any here that identify with the landowner? Trying and trying everything to make things work with these wicked tenants? Okay. Now let's change that perspective. Let's consider the vineyard planet Earth. Now, who do you identify with? Aren't we all tenants of vineyard planet Earth? God has given us this beautiful vineyard, and God has given us a lease agreement, telling us we have dominion over the earth and the animals, all of creation. Dominion. Dominion that means caring for creation, not neglecting and plundering creation. And God asks us in return for leasing the vineyard to provide a simple payment. To love God. To love our neighbor. Our human neighbors and our plant and animal neighbors. And to truly care for all creation. So how well are we holding up our end of the agreement as tenants of vineyard planet Earth? Are we abiding by the lease agreement to love God and our neighbor, to care for creation? Let's look at this corner of the vineyard called the United States in comparison to the rest of the vineyard. The U.S. ranks first in gross domestic product and 12th in standard of living amongst the poorest 20% of the people who live in Vineyard America. We rank first by a long ways in the number of millionaires and billionaires and 18th for child poverty. We rank first in military technology and last in protecting our children from gun violence. And since 1950, just 75 years ago, we, the tenants of Vineyard Earth, have consumed more natural resources than were consumed in all time prior to that. In just 75 years. And plants and animals, in an article I read, are becoming extinct at the greatest rate in recorded history. One every 20 minutes. I wonder what the vineyard owner thinks about that. Is the vineyard owner sending profits to us that might give us a clue? Are the vineyard owner's profits those who cry out about the effects of global warning, warming and the environment? Are the vineyard owner's profits those who warn of pollution and depletion of natural resources in this vineyard planet Earth? Are the vineyard owner's Prophets, those who challenge us to do something about the widening gap between the wealthy and the poor. And like the tenants in the parable, if we don't like the message, do we kill the messenger by not listening? By doing nothing? The important question for you and me today is how do we respond? In the parable of Matthew, the chief priests and Pharisees are the ones who are angrily passing judgment on themselves, the wicked tenants. But you know, we never hear what the landowner will do. Only what the Pharisees think the landowner should do. God, our landowner, sent Jesus the Son to help us to understand this great relationship that we have with creation, to teach us our responsibility to love our neighbor and to care for each other, to love God, which means to also love and care for all creation. And God, rather than giving up on the wicked tenants, the wild grapes in Isaiah, continues to try to make good wine no matter how wild the grapes in the vineyard earth may be. And today at this table, with the fruits of creation, the finest bread and wine, Christ will equip us to be good stewards, good tenants of vineyard earth. 
God the landowner seems determined to keep trying, even if we continually fail. For dear friends, God has faith in us. God's love for us and God's grace for us are greater than any wickedness that the tenants of vineyard earth may ever have. But unlike the parable, God isn't an absentee landowner. God is alive in creation, in and through the living body of Christ. Christians, Christians around the world, people who care for creation and want to live in harmony with the earth, its people, and all creation. What would happen? How would we think if just for a moment we considered creation not as a natural resource to be consumed, but as the very body of God. Would we treat this beautiful vineyard earth just a little differently if we saw the earth and all creation as the body of God? Would we stand by and watch as, as resources are plundered? Would we stand by and watch as global warming destroys God's body? Would we stand by and watch as plants and animals became extinct? Or would we act? Would we act to protect and care for all creation as the very body of God? God created the land and sea, the plants and animals and all creatures, and God said it was good, blessing all the creatures of God's vineyard earth. What kind of tenants of this beautiful vineyard will we be? Our theme throughout the season of creation has been hope is to act. Hope is to act. How then shall we live? May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.